Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. In this video, we will learn object-oriented programming using Java. Let's get started. First of all, I want to ask you a question. What makes an object? So, an object is made of a tangible material. For example, the pen. The pen is made of a plastic and metal and also it has ink in the pen. An object holds together as a single whole. For example, the whole pen. An object has properties, the color of the pen, where it is, and how thick it writes. An object can do things and can have things done to it. For example, you can think of your bank account as an object, but it is not made of material. Although you and the bank may use paper and other material in keeping track of your account, your account exists independently of this material. Although it is not material, your account has properties. For example, it has balance, an interest rate, and also an honor. And you can do things to it, deposit money or cancel it. And it can do things to it, charge for transaction or accumulate interest. Next, let's look more about object. Consider a tube of four yellow tennis balls. Question number one, is the tube of tennis balls an object? Well, yes, it has identity. My tube of balls is different than yours. It has state, whether it's open, unopened, brand name, and location. And also it has behavior, although not much. Next question, is each tennis ball an object? Well, yes, it is okay for objects to be part of other objects, although each ball has nearly the same state and behavior as the other. Next question, could the top two balls be considered as a single object? It is okay, but each has its own identity independent of the other. If they were joined together with a stick, you might consider them as one object. Is the color of the balls an object? Well, the answer is no, because it is a property of each ball. Alright, let's move on to software objects as memory. So, we know that many programs are written to do things that are concerned with the real world. It is convenient to have software objects that are similar to real-world objects. This makes the program and what it does easier to think about. Software objects have identity, state, and behavior, just as do real-world objects. Of course, software objects exist entirely within a computer system and don't directly interact with real-world objects. So in this case, software objects have identity, each of this is a distinct chunk of memory, even though it may look nearly the same as other objects. Software objects have state. Some of the memory that makes up a software object is used for variables, which contain values. These values are the state of the object. Software objects have behavior. Some of the memory that makes up a software object contains program where we call methods that enable the object to do things. The object does something when one of its methods run. But now, let's look at a more formal definition for object. An object is an entity with a well-defined boundary and identity that encapsulates state and behavior. That is, the purpose of the object should be clear. An object has two key components. One, attributes. Second, operation. Attributes and relationship represent an object state. Operation represent the behavior of the object. Object behavior and state are discussed in the next few screen. So here, let's look at an object has state. State is a condition or situation during the life of an object which satisfies some condition, performs some activity, or waits for some event. The state of an object is one of the possible conditions in which an object may exist. The state may change over time. 
the state of an object is usually implemented by a set of properties called attributes along with the values of the properties and the link of the object may have with other objects. State is not defined by a state attribute or a set of attributes. Instead, state is defined by the total of an object's attribute and links. For example, if Professor Clark's status changed from tenured to retired, the state of the Professor Clark object would change. Next, let's look at an object has behavior. Behavior determine how an object acts and reacts. Objects are intended to mirror the concepts that they are modeled after, including behavior. Behavior determine how an object acts and reacts to requests from other objects. Objects' behavior is represented by the operation that the objects can perform. For example, Professor Clark can choose to take a sabbatical once every five years. The Professor Clark object represents this behavior through the take sabbatical operation. Now, let's move on to an object has identity. In the real world, two people can share the same characteristic. For example, name, birthday, job description. Yet, there is no doubt that they are two individuals with a unique identity. The same concept holds true for objects. Although two objects may share the same state, for example, attributes and relationship, they are separate, independent objects with their own unique identity. This is an example. Two professors have same name and same behavior, which they teach biology. However, they are unique because they have different gender. Right, let's look at an example of a program that shows the definition of a bicycle class which acts as a template for all objects of bicycle. So, you can refer back what you have learned before you need to start with a class bicycle and followed by data member declaration and then you need to declare constructor and then the assessor and mutator next let's look at the main program that will use the bicycle class so this is an example that shows the main class saves bicycle registration that will create object of bicycle. So this bicycle class is not part of any standard package. It is something that we have to define ourselves. So in this class, as you can see, it's calling the bicycle class. So it create an object, bike one, bike two, and then it create a variable, owner one, owner two. So after the declaration of the object name, now it create and assign values to byte 1. So byte 1 equal to new bicycle and after that it set the owner name and pass the parameter of Adam Smith. Similar to what it does to byte 2. Create an object and call a method set owner name with Ben Jones. Here is the method get owner name being called for these two bikes. Right? When a class is defined, we can create multiple instances of the class as shown by this example. Notice how all the instances have their own copy of data members. Now, Let's look at how we can use a class to make many objects. Cookies in the real world are objects, of course, but real world cookie cutters are objects too. So a class is like a cookie cutter that can be used many times to make many cookies. There is only one cookie cutter, but can be used to make many cookies. 
Cookies are objects and each one has its own individuality because each one is made out of a different section of dough. Different cookies may have different characteristics, even though they follow the same basic pattern. For example, cookies may have candy sprinkle or frosting, or maybe bake for different length of time. Okay, I want to ask you a question. Do you think that a Java class has an object like nature, just as does a cookie cutter? Well, yes, in order for a plan to be followed, it has to somehow exist. Alright, now let's do some review on OOP concept. Let's start with data member declaration in a class. So basically, we will have modifier, data type, and name. Here are an example of data member declaration so you have modifiers data type and name so for modifier you will have something like private protected and public and also data type so as we have learned before in your previous semester you can have string double integer and a name you can use any name all right let's move on to method declaration so in a method, we will also have modifier, written type, method name, and parameter in parentheses. So here an example. So you can use any modifier, whether it's public, private, or protected. And then you can choose what are the written type. It could be double, integer, or void. Void meaning that you do not have any written type. Method name and also the string name which is the parameter that you want to pass so in the curly bracket you will have the statements that you want to do for this method now let's move on to constructor in a class what is a constructor a constructor is a special method that is executed when a new instance of the class is created in a constructor declaration you will need to define modifier class name and parameter so here are an example of constructor declaration. So you can declare your modifier as public, private or protected, the class name and the parameter, the one that you're going to define here. So notice that there is no written type or uh, data type between the modifier and class name. So this is the uniqueness of a constructor. Alright, let's move on to assessor. Assessor also similar to get method so what is assessor assessor is a method that return information about an object so here are an example of assessor method you have public string get owner name and then you return the owner name so this is a return information about who is the owner of a bicycle next let's look at mutator method in a class so what is mutator method so a mutator is a method that sets a property of an object. So here are example, public void set or a name, and then you have a parameter here. So you need to declare the data type. And then this is the variable that you assign to the particular parameter. On a name equal to name. So set on a name is a mutator method that set a property of an object. Alright, I think that's all for now. Please read chapter 1 in the course content in your future platform. Thank you.